You know, folks, when she's not whining and dining with big shots, uh, Elton, I hate to point it out, but you know that says winning and dinning? <laughs> Let's get a shot of winning and dinning, please, to prove my point once again. <laughs> winning and dinning? Yeah, winning and dinning. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's try it again. All right, Elton, we'll do it your way. <laughs> when she's not winning and dinning with big shots, and I changed big shots, Elton. <laughs> she's traveling through China, scribbling notes for another book. Here with her latest tome, Jan Wong's China. Please welcome Jan Wong. <laughs> It's a pleasure to have you here, Jan. Yeah, sorry, uh, sorry about your last visit. Tom well, Green was climbing mouse. all over you. I saw the mouse. Mm -hmm. It was in the ceiling light, and I said, Tom Green's here. Oh, you saw the mouse downstairs? It was going like this inside yeah. the fluorescence. Okay. So I didn't but eat the cheese. Have you recovered from your last visit where Tom was climbing all over It was over? the highlight of my career. Mm -hmm. And I'm... Uh, <laughs> I asked Al to leave because I'm pretty sure Al was going to well, go. Well, you know, he, he has his problems. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. Now, uh, you traveled uh, with your husband and your children when you did this book, did you not? Yes. Uh, no, actually, hardly my children. I used my children as decoys when I needed to go to Tiananmen Square and I didn't want to get arrested by the secret police. Ah, I see. Because <laughs> I'm such a good mother, you know. That's great. <laughs> so you had your kids run through the square ahead of you? And when the soldiers took off after your kids, you went into the square. That's right. Yeah, great journalist, bad mom. How's that sound? <laughs> now, you did, you did travel through China with your husband. Yes. And you stayed in hotels together, but it was very interesting because you couldn't share a suite together, could you? Well, I only took them on one trip, actually, mm -hmm. when I sneaked into Tibet, mm -hmm. because they wouldn't give me any permission to go into Tibet for six years. And so when I finally figured out a way to forge and lie my way in, right. I took... Norman, my husband, because I look Chinese and I was really afraid the Tibetans wouldn't tell me how much they hated Chinese and I wanted to get the real story. Right. So Norman isn't Chinese. He sort of looks like you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. yeah. That's not a come on. This is one handsome guy. You're happy, huh? <laughs> yeah. So I took him so that he could go and ask all the monks and nuns what they thought. Right. And because he had a visa that said he was married to a journalist, he had to go separately from me. Right. But in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. <laughs> we sneaked across the hall. Oh, to be but together? But that's only because I had a hole in my mosquito netting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, please continue, Tramp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what can I say? I'll tell you later. It's her husband, it's folks. Okay. That's the joke. <laughs> I'm sorry, sometimes you have He's to be led by the hand. much better than Tom Green. <laughs> yes. You're better than Tom Green. You, Is that you a compliment? Didn't, but yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you're much better than John Alamein. <laughs> Is that a compliment? <laughs> okay. John now, is a very nice man. Now, everywhere you went, mm -hmm. you didn't always tell people you were a journalist, did you? No, because I took Ethics 101 at journalism school, but mm -hmm. that was Ethics 101 for a democracy. Right. And I learned quickly that in a totalitarian dictatorship, you can't always do that. If I told everybody I interviewed in China that I was a reporter, I am making them an accomplice right. in the interview. Right. And so sometimes I would not say, but they knew right away. They didn't, right. but they didn't want me to state it. So what's your cover when you uh, just tell them you're nosy? Hey, I'm really nosy. No, I would say I'm a dietitian. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Um, or I would say, you know, I'm doing some research on AIDS. Mm -hmm. I, I said that when I was. And I was. I mean, literally, I am asking questions about AIDS. So when I stopped in to see some prostitutes, mm -hmm. and I had to do a really quick interview, mm -hmm. um, that's what I said. I'm from Canada. That's not a lie. I'm interested in AIDS in right. China, and do you use condoms? Right. And, and? Then, and then they said, no, they didn't. And then their John showed up. The right. pimp showed up. So I had to get out of there really fast. Wow. Yeah. yeah he wasn't pleased to see me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, what, uh, is, is the AIDS virus as rampant in China as it is in North America? Yes, but the problem is that there's so little knowledge about it. They think right. of it as a foreigner's disease. Right. And so I had to get an AIDS test when I went to China. All mm -hmm. foreigners have to get an AIDS test, but Chinese don't. And mm -hmm. they didn't even test the blood supply for years. Is so that right? So it, it really wow. is spreading very fast. Wow. 
Now, with the biggest, uh, that they have had, uh, they have had, uh, well, they've Easy had a revolution <laughs> there in the past two and a half, three years. It, yeah. It's, it's been unbelievable. Western mm -hmm. culture has gone in there in a huge, huge way, and I'm sure there's been growing pains. But it struck me that uh, the entire country is uh, practically ready to implode on itself with everything that's going on. Well, I think China's in a very unstable position right now because you have Starbucks in there, you have McDonald's, you have The Gap, right. uh, you have Benetton, but you don't have a lot of freedom. Right. And I, I think when you give people email and the internet and then you still try to clamp down on them, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And so that huge contradiction means that China could explode at any moment or yeah. implode, yeah. as you say. And uh, there's so many problems with uh, building and construction industry. There's a lot of kickbacks going on, I assume. Right. And there's uh, shoddy construction, so some bridges collapse and some buildings collapse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it reminds me of, well, I wasn't around then, but it reminds me of the West at the start of the Industrial Revolution. Right. Right. And, and we have the robber barons, and we have child labor, and we have prostitution, and we have all kinds of evils. Mm -hmm. But it's a really interesting country. But it's also a political climate that can change from day to day. On Tuesday, it may be all right for you to be a millionaire. On Wednesday, you may have everything taken away, and uh, right. you may look at being re-educated. Well, I interviewed this really interesting millionaire, or a zillionaire. I think he's a zillionaire. Mm -hmm. And he's just been arrested and tried. And I don't think he's been sentenced yet. Mm -hmm. But he was very powerful. He got his start... Um, selling canned goods for Soviet planes. Right. He swapped canned goods because they had no food in the Soviet Union, so he swapped for planes. So, yeah, it's, it's very scary, actually, to be there. And it's the kind of situation where they have an influx of uh, Western products, but no way to repair them when they break down. You've got a country full of Xerox machines and no parts to fix them. Yes, but that will probably change if China joins the WTO when they, mm -hmm. change, uh, when they join it. But the problem will be that all the state industries will go bankrupt, like right. all the state-owned workers. Um, won't be able to make it in the new competitive world. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any plans to go back in the near future? Well, when I went back for this book, um, I didn't tell anyone and I had to sneak in as a tourist. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to go through Hong Kong, so I don't like to say if I'm going or mm -hmm. not. Do you want to come with me? To China? Yeah. Yes, but uh, <laughs> we'll go undercover. We'll pretend that I'm your husband. We don't want any hanky-panky. <laughs> Yes. Separate yes. hotel rooms. Yes, yes, separate hotel rooms. Good. I want to thank you very much for coming by. And it's a very interesting book. An excellent, uh, an excellent companion to Red China Blues. Thank I you like very that. Much. We'll be right back with Danko Jones. Don't go away, ladies and gentlemen.